Have you ever wondered if a star exploded close enough to leave dust on Earth? This week, a weird chemical spike in Pacific seafloor rock that might be the fingerprint of a nearby supernova. If that's true, our planet literally carries stardust from a blast in our neighborhood. And it gets better! Two Mars orbiters just photographed an interstellar comet as it slipped past the red planet, an ice ball from another star's backyard. Out in deep space, we found perfect rings of radio light, huge ripples around galaxies that may be powered by cosmic superwinds. Closer to home, the Death Star moon Mimas might hide a young ocean under its crust, and a far-flung object nicknamed Ammonite is bending the rules of the outer solar system, maybe even the case for Planet Nine. This is Astro News Weekly. Real discoveries, receipts on screen, no fluff. Let's dive in. Did a nearby supernova dust Earth? A strange chemical breadcrumb in Pacific seafloor rock may be the fingerprint of a nearby supernova, a star that exploded close enough that its dust settled on Earth. If that's true, our planet literally carries stardust from a blast in our neighborhood. Geochemists dated layers to around 10 million years and found a sharp beryllium-10 spike, a sign that cosmic rays flooded the atmosphere. To test the cause, astronomers backtraced nearby star clusters using ESA's Gaia to see which could have produced a local supernova. This isn't the first cosmic clue. We've already found live Iron 60 in ocean crust and on the moon, another supernova calling card. With B10 and FE60 pointing to the same time window, it looks less like a one-off and more like a local cluster era of supernovae that lightly bathe Earth in extra radiation. A supernova at the right distance won't sterilize life, but it can nudge climate and biology, tweak mutation rates, and leave isotopic timestamps we can read like tree rings. It's a reminder that Earth's history is written not only by volcanoes and ice, but by our stellar neighborhood. Two moves. First, more cores from other oceans to confirm the signal. Second, tighter Gaia modeling to pin the blast window and the culprit cluster. Interstellar Comet 3i Atlas, new Mars orbit updates. Further to our ongoing coverage of Interstellar Visitor 3i Atlas, we have new imaging and analysis from Mars orbit. Only three interstellar objects are confirmed so far. Seeing one from Mars is extremely rare. ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and Mars Express, updated coma imaging sequences and first-pass spectral extraction attempts, commanded from ESOC, Darmstadt, Germany. Science processing split across Europe. Further, this week we've got cleaner image stacks of the coma, plus a first pass at a spectrum across the brightest patch. The signal is faint, but real. Early ratios suggest the mix of water and carbon dioxide isn't a perfect match to comets raised in our solar system. And the way the dust spreads looks a little off pattern too, hinting at different ice chemistry or a different childhood around 3i Atlas's home star. This is why we keep chasing it. An interstellar comet is a care package from another planetary nursery. If its chemistry and dust behavior don't line up with ours, that's evidence that planet building isn't one recipe. It changes from star to star. Next steps, cleaner background removal, then co-adding the spectra to pull out the weak lines. On the ground, teams are lining up windows at the Very Large Telescope, Paranal Chile and Roque de los Muchachos, Giant rings of light in deep space, new record, double ringed. Far beyond our galaxy, radio telescopes keep finding enormous odd radio circles, orcs, halos of emission the size of galaxies. This week brings a new record, the most distant and most powerful orc so far, and it's double ringed. A citizen science team working with astronomers on the LOFAR array. Data from LOFAR, Netherlands led, Analysis across partner institutes in Europe. Roughly a billion light years, the symmetry and size suggest a huge energy release from the host galaxy, either a past black hole outburst or superwinds from intense star formation. Think of it like a bubble blown into the galaxy's halo. The radio ring is where shock and magnetic fields light up electrons. The second ring hints at multiple episodes, a galaxy that burped twice, or a shock within a shock as gas plows into older material. Orcs turn galaxies from quiet islands into engines with exhaust. By mapping where these rings appear, we watch feedback in action, 
how black holes and starbursts heat and push gas, slowing the next generation of stars. That feeds into dark matter halo models, metal enrichment, and the life cycle of galaxies. Next steps, low frequency mapping to catch the faint outer edges and X-ray follow-ups to weigh the hot gas. Targets include Meerkat, South Africa, and space-based X-ray archives. Deeper low-far reprocessing is already in the queue. Saturn's moon Mimas might hide a young ocean. Saturn's tiny moon Mimas, the one that looks like the Death Star, may hide a liquid ocean beneath its ice. New modeling doesn't just say maybe. It points to specific thin ice corridors where a probe should look first. A planetary geophysics team reanalyzed the wobble and crater patterns with fresh ice rheology models. With collaborators across Europe US, results shared this week, refining early year hints that Mimas's shell might be thinner than expected. The team tuned tidal flexing models until the predicted wobble matched what we've measured from flybys and long baseline imaging. Only certain maps of ice thickness make the wobble and crater statistics line up, and those maps carve out narrow corridors where the ice may be just kilometers thin. A young ocean fits best, either Mimas warmed up recently, or tidal heating is stronger than we thought for such a small moon. If Mimas can keep liquid water, ocean worlds may be common, not rare, and some could be younger, still warming up today. That widens the search for habitable environments beyond the usual big names like Europa and Enceladus. A targeted orbiter to fly low over the fin zones with ice-penetrating radar, thermal mapping, and a gravity pass. Or a microlander for one clean test, heat probe, seismometer, or a sniffer if there's even a whisper of plume gas. Ammonite, a rule-breaking sednoid. Far beyond Neptune, a new distant world, 2023 KQ-14, nicknamed Ammonite, follows an odd, tilted path that doesn't fit the usual Kuiper Belt families. It's another fossil from the solar system's earliest days, and it may tighten the case for how our outer frontier was sculpted. A small-body survey team refining astrometry and orbit solutions, Discovery imaging and follow-ups from major survey telescopes in the Americas. Updated orbit elements posted this week, firming up its perihelion and inclination. Ammonite sits farther out and on a steeper tilt than typical Kuiper belt objects. That orbit remembers ancient pushes, maybe from a distant undiscovered planet, a passing star, or the sun's birth cluster. By locking down its perihelion distance and inclination, we can rule some formation stories out and make others more likely. Every new sednoid is a clue to the big puzzle, how the outer solar system was shaped. If orbits like Ammonites pile up in the same directions, that strengthens specific models, like a Planet 9-type perturber, and weakens others. Either way, we get a cleaner map of our system's deep past. More astrometry to trim the error bars, deeper wide-field surveys to find its cousins, and color brightness measurements to guess at surface ices. Let's sprint through Cosmic Speedrun! 10. 10 space hits in one breath. Number 1. Fastest growing rogue planet observed. Astronomers watched a lonely starless planet gulp gas faster than theory allows, hinting some worlds keep growing even after they're kicked out of their birth systems. Number 2. Delta Arigat's Peak. A gentle meteor shower from Auriga brought slow, graceful streaks across northern skies. Better for savoring than for big counts. Number 3. Hubble maps star-forming clouds in the Large Magellanic Cloud. A razor-sharp image reveals shock fronts and dark dust lanes where new clusters are taking shape in our nearby galactic neighbor. Number 4. Aurora Watch. Coronal Hole High-Speed Stream. Forecasters slagged a fast solar wind stream that could light up high latitudes. Clear dark skies may reward patient watchers. Number 5. Unified model for giant planet jet streams. A new framework links Jupiter's and Saturn's bright bands to deep rotating columns below the clouds, finally making those stripes make sense. Number 6. JWST spots Neptune's mid-latitude auroras. Webb found auroras away from the poles on Neptune, pointing to a magnetic field geometry more complicated than the textbook picture. Number 7. ASCAP finds two hidden pulsars, 
Australia's radio array uncovered two faint, fast-spinning stellar remnants that earlier surveys missed, adding precise space clocks to timing networks. Number 8. Mystery molecule detected in a brown dwarf. An unexpected chemical signal in a cool, dim object suggests its atmosphere doesn't follow our usual playbook under such cold, high-pressure conditions. Number 9. ELT mirror segments arrive at Cerro Amazonas. Crate by crate, pieces of the 39.3-meter primary mirror are reaching the Chilean mountaintop, moving the world's largest optical telescope toward first light. Number 10. AI model extends solar storm warnings to days. A new forecaster stretches lead time from hours to days, giving satellites and power grids a real chance to prepare before the sun throws a punch. That's a wrap on Cosmic Speed Run 10. This week we chase stardust in Earth's rocks, an interstellar comet at Mars. Galaxy scale radio rings, a maybe ocean inside Mimas, and a rule-breaking world called Ammonite. Plus, 10 quick headlines to keep you current. If this made the universe a little clearer, tap like, share with one space curious friend, and subscribe so you don't miss next week's sky. Got a question or a story we should feature? Drop it below. See you in the next Astro News Weekly. Keep looking up.